Good morning, dear students, and welcome back to your English class. From our Beehive book today, we are going to do poem number five, A Legend of the Northland, written by Phoebe Cary. Phoebe Cary was an American poetess and the younger sister of Alice Cary. These sisters co-published poems in 1849 and then each went to publish volumes of their own. Cary occasionally attended school as she often had to work at home and hence was largely self-educated. Phoebe died of hepatitis and was buried in New York and after the death of both sisters, a joint anthology of their poems was also completed. The central idea of the poem A Legend of Northland is that this poem is written in the form of a ballad. A ballad is a narrative poem written in short stanzas and is a part of a folklore. This poem fits well into the category of a ballad because it is composed in simple language with four line stanzas and has an important moral lesson to convey through an old story. It teaches us not to be selfish. It is meant to be read by small children and it is based in Northland, a very cold place where once St. Peter came to the door of a little woman who was baking cakes and he asked her for a cake as he was feeling very weak due to fasting. She was selfish and did not even give him a small piece. St. Peter cursed and told her that she was not to live in human form and enjoy the food and warmth. He turned her into a woodpecker who has to dig a hole in hard and dry wood to get its scant food. Let us now read the poem paragraph wise and try to understand the poem. Para 1 Away, away in the Northland where the hours of the day are few. And the nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through. In the first four lines, the poetess describes Northland from where her story originates. Here the days are short, but the nights are long in winter. And due to extreme cold, the people can't sleep through the night. Para 2 where they harness the swift reindeer to the sledges when it snows and the children look like bears cubs in their funny furry clothes. In the next four lines, the poetess is saying that when the snow falls, people go sledging by tying reindeers to their sledges to pull them. Children wear heavy furry clothes due to extreme cold and they look like bear cubs in those furry clothes. Para 3. They tell them a curious story. I don't believe it is true. And yet you may learn a lesson if I tell the tale to you. In the third paragraph, the poetess says that the parents in the Northland tell their children a curious story. The poetess thinks that the story is not true. Yet they shall learn a lesson from this. The lesson, however, is more important that the people should learn. Para 4. Once when the good Saint Peter lived in the world below and walked about it preaching just as he did, you know. In this paragraph, the poetess begins to tell the story. Once when the good Saint Peter lived in the world below, he walked about it preaching. The poetess is trying to tell us that Saint Peter Peter who was a saint and came to live in the world and was preaching throughout the world once when he came to Northland this is the story then when it begins just as he walked he came to a cottage door Saint Peter's was walking all over Northland and preaching and there he came to a cottage door para 5 he came to the door of a cottage in traveling round the earth where a little woman was making cakes and baking them on the hearth. In this paragraph, the poetess explains that St. Peter came to a cottage door while he was traveling round the earth. And in the cottage, a little woman was making cakes in her fireplace for herself. She was baking them on the hearth. Hearth is the stove on which she was making the baking the cakes. 
para 6 and being faint with fasting for the day was almost done he asked her from her store of cakes to give him a single one in para 6 the poet says that saint peter was pale with fasting because he had been fasting the whole day his complexion had become pale he had become weak he was almost going to faint due to weakness the day had almost finished and it was getting uh, dark saint peter wanted to eat something so he asked the little woman to give him a single cake out of the store of cakes he did not want much he just wanted one single cake so that he could eat and become better again para 7 so she made a very little cake but as it baking lay she looked at it and thought it seemed too large to give away in para 7 the poet says that the little woman heard what saint peter said and she agreed to give him a little cake and she made a very small cake for saint peter but as it was baking and she looked at the cake she thought that if i have to give away this cake it is too big to give away she wanted she because she was so miser she believed that if she would give this cake away she would be at loss paragraph 8 therefore she needed another and still a smaller one but it looked when she turned it over as large as the first had done in paragraph 8 the poet says that seeing that the baking cake was too large to give away the little woman needed another smaller dough to bake a cake but when this cake was also baking she felt that it was also too large to give away she was so selfish that she did not want to give even a small piece of the cake to saint uh, peter's